more on our top story with legislation to overturn the so-called Medivac system passing Parliament. I'm joined now by Paul McFun, who's the Executive Director of Médecins Sans Frontières Australia. Thank you so much for your time tonight. Your response to the repeal of these Medivac laws in the Senate. Yeah, I mean, it's appalling news, and I think it will have a heavy traumatic uh, impact on those uh, that will now find themselves stuck uh, again with very few options to seek uh, the level of medical assistance that they need that's not available where they're being uh, indefinitely uh, contained. Do you know the numbers of people who have been transferred from Manus Island and Nauru to Australia for treatment? Yes, yeah, so look, in the last uh, year, in 2019, around 200 people were independently assessed by medical professionals determined to be critically ill and requiring a, a level of assistance that wasn't available for them where they were being detained um, and as a result they've been uh, transferred here to Australia. Um, the government says that it's about 184 people and that none of them are currently in hospital, rather they're living in hotel rooms and apartments because the government can't send them back to Nauru or Papua New Guinea and uh, or to a third country. That's problematic for the Australian government, isn't it? Well, what I could say is it's very hard to know exactly what is going on because there's not a lot of visibility and certainly no visibility to an independent organisation like ours. You know, what I can say is we spent 11 months working with asylum seekers and refugees on our route. Um, our patient cohorts were suffering severe mental illness. It was a mental health crisis, one of the first, sorry, the worst we've ever experienced. And we had 60% of our patients, you know, thinking about suicide. 30% had tried to commit suicide, including patients as young as nine years old. So we know that there are fundamental uh, mental health traumas and we know that offshore processing of this indefinite nature causes predictable mental harm. So there is no question that people are severely ill, and I don't doubt for a minute that the medical professionals that made those assessments and called for those referrals did so legitimately. What has happened to those patients since and what their condition is is something that we have, like I say, no real visibility on. Why was Médecins Sans Frontières forced off Nauru last year? Uh, the government of Nauru um, made a unilateral decision that our services were no longer required. That was the official position. Um, and I think clearly the fact that we were becoming uh, so heavily uh, involved in what was clearly a mental health crisis uh, was a concern. Uh, at the end of the day, uh, I think we, it was no longer expedient for them politically to have an independent organisation fully aware of what was taking place and what the impact of these offshore policies of indefinite containment uh, are resulting in, in terms of uh, the severe mental condition of people who've endured now more than six years uh, in this indefinite despair. And um, why can't those mental health services be provided on Manus Island and Nauru? Well, actually, the kind of mental health services we're talking about uh, are really specialised, and we're talking about referring to secondary-level care that, that's simply not available. It's, it's largely absent there. When we were working on Nauru, uh, there really was not, uh, Nauru was not equipped with a level of psychiatric support and inpatient care that's required. They simply do not have the facility for that, whereas that's readily available uh, in Australia. And this is comprehensive care. It's not something that's simply delivered uh, lightly or easily. It's care that's required over quite a long continuum. This is obviously a highly political issue. What do you make of the deal that's been done to secure Jackie Lambie's support? The government, of course, denies that a deal has been done. The, the bottom line here, this is not about Medi the Medivac bill. It's not about Senator Lambie. The fundamental issue here is that policymakers have chosen to continue support a policy uh, of offshore indefinite detention that causes predictable known harm. Uh, on people. This the medical evacuation bill was simply an instrument put in place, a lifeline, to alleviate that, to allow people to have an independent assessment and a, a vehicle through which that they could be transferred to get the care they need. The fundamental issue here is now the, the, the Medivac bill is in place, so it's not in place. These people will continue to become sicker. We know that. Everybody knows that, but there's no political will to address that situation. The speculation is that Jackie Lambie demanded a resettlement agreement with New Zealand. You would welcome that? MSF continues, as it always has, to call for the complete removal of everybody from offshore detention. It causes mental, physical harm. It's predictable. It's known. 
We've documented it in Nauru. We've documented it elsewhere in the world. There's a body of medical evidence behind this. It was presented to the Senate inquiry. Uh, it simply has to happen, whether it's to New Zealand, to Australia, or other safe locations. People need a safe environment. They can rebuild their lives. They can be reunited with their families. They can overcome the severe trauma they've been under for the past six years. So then you don't need these Medivac laws then, do you, if, uh, mm -hmm. if, if the refugees on these in these two places can be resettled in a third country? The Medivac bill was a band-aid to try and address an emergency, a crisis in which people were suffering. They were not getting the care they needed. It wasn't available where they were. It was simply a lifeline to enable them to get that care elsewhere, namely here. The fundamental problem is we're causing people physical and mental harm by keeping them indefinitely detained in offshore processing. Meds on Frontiers, Paul McFann.